Women Matters mean meeting on the last day of July of 2023. So check in. How is it all over the world? Germany, California, South Africa, Italy. I mean, we are quite international, aren't we? I would like to start with Germany. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. Um, get out from the middle, from north of Frankfurt. Yeah, check in. My good news, I had one whole week with babies. <laughs> so I have two almost toddlers. The one just turned one and the other one is going to turn one. Uh, they are six weeks apart. And so the cousins came together in our house. And it was just wonderful. I mean, you couldn't do much more <laughs> than just being with the babies and going out in the playground or yeah. So, but it was just such a wonderful time together with the kids and the, their kids. So, so we're having a good time. And this morning I had my second training with an Australian company. So they are startups and uh, so how to support each other, how to give back up, you, you know the word already. So it's like a short coaching form. And that was really nice. I really liked it. <laughs> and normally I don't like to record myself. So like everybody can watch it and judge it and so it's my first like official thing that I did in this in this contract. But I felt good about what I said and how I did it. So yeah, I felt brave. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's me and I go all the way down to South Africa. Thank you, Gertrude. <clears throat> I loved when, watching your energy when you were sharing about babies and about this company with startups. It's wonderful. It was just wonderful. Thank you for that. Uh, with me, um, I've been in the process of detoxing physically as well as cleaning my laptop out and backupping stuff. So lots of cleaning out. But I'm also excited on Thursday. I'm sharing a session at a Workplace Wellness Summit, and it's all about our potential wellness indicators. And then what that thing that makes us really spark and shine in the world. And then on the 10th, our one workshop is going to be shared in Japanese on the 10th. So I'm really excited about that. My translator has experienced the workshop already. And now we're going to co-facilitate it in English and in Japanese. So I'm looking forward to that. You must excuse my voice is leaving me. I don't know why. <laughs> so I'll pass on to Victoria. Thank you, Hanali. And I hope you had a wonderful birthday. Um, I, I, um, I'm glad that now we're connected. Um, so the the talk of babies of course if i if i weren't rigorously studying buddhism would make me really 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 envious of you gertrude <laughs> because <laughs> i'm waiting and waiting and this talk of people not getting married till they're in their 70s is making me quite nervous because <laughs> beatrice is she's not in her 70s yet but um but and by the time she is i won't be around anyway um yeah i i my biological clock, my secondary biological clock's been ticking for years now. <clears throat> I was just having breakfast with a friend yesterday um, at a at a very old fashioned, very old diner um, uh, and sat in the very seat where a, a number of years before the pandemic, a little baby had been sitting um, with her mother and her father, total strangers, but we were at the at the counter. And the baby turned to me, the little, little girl, and reached out her arms to 
to she wanted me to pick her up and I was so shocked because I she was a stranger and I didn't know how the mother would react because some parents are very protective of their children well most parents are and so I kind of looked at the mother and the mother said it's okay and so I took the baby and then she wouldn't let go of me she wanted <laughs> she didn't want to go back to her parents and um my friend took a picture of it so just yesterday this was years ago but yesterday we just happened to be sitting in the very same seats and I had a flashback and I thought oh if only I had a little grandchild so um so anyway but it was I love to vicariously experience the the chaos scare trout of your family um I don't really have any any um any profound news right now um and I have to leave early so I'm gonna I'm going to actually cut this short uh that was my little check-in check-out because <laughs> I have to go to a doctor appointment but I'll just slip away when the time comes but in the meantime um I'll pass to you to my other Californian uh connection Christine thanks thanks I'm Christine in Carlsbad California and I feel like these weeks just fly by and I stop and think what ha what happened <laughs> since the last time we met and I have no idea um I kind of feel like I'm a little bit off my game uh in terms of integral things spiritual things growth personal growth um haven't really paid too much attention to that lately and uh Tom and I are getting a a uh, house that we a rental house that we have uh prepared for the next renters and we have spent I, I mean up to Tom's taken two weeks off of work and I'm there three days of the weekend and uh it's coming to a conclusion but it's been aggravating and thankfully he and I haven't fought too much <laughs> over stupid little things uh we have argued some um, our younger daughter wants to know if she can rent the house, which of course she cannot afford. And it's been um, it's been an awful feeling because she lives with us and she really wants to move out. But um, the rents are so high in this area; it's really prohibitive uh, in terms of what she makes for a living um, as a as a lab uh, technician. Um, she makes pretty good money for her age, but it doesn't help with cost of living here. So Tom and I are trying to figure out how and when, you know, in her young life, do we hop in and, and try to help her versus allow her to kind of figure things out. So that's been stressful. Um, yeah, so mostly stress, I think, <laughs> since the last time we met, uh, more stressful, which probably, again, takes me out of my thinking more about higher higher level things because I'm down in the muck trying to just make sure each day I don't forget a million things or, you know, uh, that I'm keeping on track. So hopefully that will be over soon and uh, get back to having a little bit more fun and a little bit more purposeful um study and thinking and development so i'm looking forward to that and i will turn over to heidi yeah that's me <laughs> italy it was quite hot uh last week uh, almost two weeks was quite hot so but you know uh, uh, and <laughs> i have a um uh air conditioning uh, I almost never switch it on because I don't like the wind, but for the dogs, I switched it on and it was broken last year and I had it repaired and this year, five days, it worked and it's broken again. And now, you know, it's, I think I should throw it out <laughs> instead of spending more money, but um, I'm quite okay. I have to say um, next weekend are two concerts. And I'm sort of preparing. I'm a very bad student. I don't like to practice, but you know, in some way it will it will work. Uh, what you say um, is the time flies by. That's what I think. I mean, the day is over. Oh, it's Monday again. Ha, huh. where did the time go? Where did the days go? But when you really think you did something in the meantime, you know, but it seems like 
the quality of time uh, has changed, at least subjectively for me. That could be one topic we could talk about, or also the next generations and what uh, where what do we hope for them that could could be, and what can we do to create a world which is still worth living? You know, I sometimes think that we are in a, on a very strange breaking point, and I don't want to be young anymore because. I think our generation, we have had quite a good life, but what is coming now, you have no idea. It can be good, it can be very bad. So the, that could be another topic. So I give over to you. What would you like to talk about? Also stress, you know, uh, that is also part of, do you want to live in a world full of stress? <laughs> Heidi, what kind of concert are you singing? Yeah, <laughs> three airs from Purcell. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's nice. This uh, cello and guitar, uh, baroque guitar and clavicembalo and uh, flute. It's nice. Mm -hmm. Is this, can you say a little more? Is it a public concert? Is it at a oh, yeah, church? Sure. Is it at a yeah. school? No, that's in churches. It, it's a group where friends of mine, instrumentalists, are playing for, for years. And this time I was invited as the singer, you know. Nice. So. Mm -hmm. After seven years that I, I didn't study anymore, not at all, but the voice is working. So <laughs> I think what you learned, what you have learned, and your body knows how it goes, that you will never unlearn in some way so even if it's not fluent and everything but i don't care <laughs> so. i i have a wonderful memory i want to share with the group when we were at the uh integral european conference it must have been back in 2016 and we went on a tour afterward and we walked through this forest pretty big forest we walked pretty far and when you come to a clearing and there's this stone church, which I don't remember how old it is, but it's like an ancient church and it's small, you know, it's in a forest. So, I mean, it's not a cathedral or anything like that. It's a small, humble stone church, but we're in there and, and people are talking and we're looking around and I don't remember how this led up to it, but all of a sudden there's this voice that is so clear and beautiful and inside this stone church it was mesmerizing and and so spiritual and special and that was Heidi I forget what you sang I maybe you remember but she just spontaneously um offered up uh her voice in in a beautiful song it was uh it was very memorable as I'm as I'm saying I remember it I don't remember what you sang, but I remember the occasion. It was wonderful. So I've I've been able to hear Heidi sing. Thank you for sharing that. I you were building up the suspense. I I thought you were going to say something like um, there was a string quartet playing there, and it was such a surprise. But yeah. that it was Heidi. I love it. Thank you, Christine, for sharing that. Yeah. I want to hear you sing, Heidi. I'll have to come to Italy and um, perform with you. <laughs> Yes, you shall do that. I'm waiting for you all to come together live and in person. <laughs> yeah, we can also talk about our artistic, spiritual and whatever um, uh, endeavors and <laughs> hopes and whatever we want to say. I was just thinking about actually the same thing that you mentioned, Christine, about time flying. And I was really, it was even yesterday when I was just reflecting on what's really happening. Because it's like we are able to take in more. So our perception of time is, it seems like it's going faster. So that exponential effect of whatever is all available to us, that suddenly because we are perceiving more, our experience of it goes faster. Or does it, don't have to make sense. 
And I was wondering how that will play up out in the future, if it continues like this, because it's almost like past, present and future is colliding in one point, because things are happening so quickly. And then I was curious about our bodily experience, you know, physical experience of it, and also mental, of course, and emotional, of the impact it will have on us to, are we going with that shift or are we going to fight it? You know, are we going to try to live in the old way with our perception of time? Or are we gently going to glide with ease and flow into this experience of suddenly our perception of time is just very different from what it was a year ago, for example. So I don't know if that, because, so when you said that, Christine, I immediately thought of my reflection yesterday about it. And mm -hmm. how easy will we be able to adapt to that? Or will it create lots of stress for us? Because like you say, we can't even remember what we did. What did we really do in the last two weeks? Mm -hmm. And it can create a lot of also fear for people who are very goal oriented and future thinking of <clears throat> how will we achieve our goals if it seems like we don't have enough time to do it. Um, the lady I learned uh, quantum healing from, she said she experienced after 2.12 or so, um, or 21 then, uh, that this is accelerating, like also growth, or even like when people are really seriously ill, then there is this decision pretty soon, will it be lethal, lethal or will they recover? So even in illness, there is more acceleration. So more speedy recovery or like maybe what lasted for months and years can be within a few uh, weeks. So the, that, that this, um, yeah. So, and what you said, uh, like, as if people say this is not my <laughs> my planet anymore or not my time anymore, so I go I go <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, so that that's what I what I heard from her, and 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 she said, well, I know you for ten years or so, but the new people that come in, they make the same like growth within months. <laughs> well, I was just, I've been actually talking about this a lot recently because my whole life, um, beginning it with the pandemic, my whole life went on Zoom. I mean, as, as many of people's did, but a lot of people that I know um, didn't engage with Zoom and they, you know, they had their, what they called their pods or whatever. That's, I think that's what they were mm -hmm. called, which meant the people they, you know, felt safe with in terms of the, of COVID. But, um, but I've been, it's, it's, it's a kind of bittersweet thing for me because I'm realizing that my best friends um, are people that I've never met in person, like you, like all of you. And I really feel connected to you also because we're, we're dealing with subjects that are important to me. It's not just chit chat about, you know, you know, trivial things. We, we, I feel like we've really co connected on a soul basis. And, um, and that's true of most of the Buddhist um, sanghas that I'm involved with also on Zoom. But the poignancy, the sad part is that in my own case, it happened to um, coincide with my whole uh, biological family falling apart completely and I'm still alienated you know four and a half years since my mother died now and um, and the only people that reach out to me reach out in hostility to you know they send sort of nasty threatening letters which I don't answer so so it's a weird moment for me in my life personally because and it, but it seems like the planet is like that too it's like either um, a lot of anger and hostility and resentment or um, a lot of sort of tender, vulnerable love. It's like this very 
it seems like things are polarized a lot. I mean, I don't know what you think, but um, in my experience, it's definitely been like that. And um, I'm so grateful, like for you and for um, for some of the other people I've met on Zoom, because also the international aspect of Zoom, like you were saying, Heidi, you know, right here, right now, we're in, you know, four different countries, I think, um, is it that's special too, because it shows that the world is is connected that that world that we talked about only philosophically of interconnectedness and interbeing um, is, is, can be a real thing. It can be a reality. And yet when Garrett Trout was talking about, you know, the family visiting and her, her kids and her grandkids, I felt a little pain in my heart. Like that's, um, that's something, well, even, even right here, Beatrice isn't here today. I don't know where she is. I haven't heard from her at all for over two weeks. So it's, it's, so it's a straight for me, it's a strange tension between this intimate, beautiful world where we're we're really touching each other's souls. And we're we're I feel like we're here for each other, even if we're, you know, not physically together. But then this strange outside world, like what's happening to all these people? Um anyway, so Gertrat, you have the best of both worlds. <laughs> or as as Dr. Pangla said in Kandi, the best of all possible worlds. So um anyway, I'm gonna slip away probably now. So I'll I'll actually say goodbye now and um blessings. I'll I'll linger for a moment because she's always late, my doctor. But I'll that that'll be my checkout. Thank you and love to all and blessings. I feel like we're talking about the issue of hope. And uh, I, when I think of my own personal future, I am hopeful. Uh, I'm not discouraged, although getting older is, you know, its own thing to worry about, but I feel hopeful. But God, the world is, <laughs> it's such a mess. I don't feel hopeful about that. But then I realized that maybe because the media you know, is obviously providing a lot of stories about how terrible climate change is. And in the U.S., it's really depressing um, what's going on politically and economically a little bit, as I said, for younger people. Um, so I feel real different when I think of things in general. I feel kind of hopeless about how are we going to solve all these problems and uh but personally, I feel like, you know, I'll I'll be OK. I guess that's the privilege of being a, a white person um, that I feel like things will work out. Uh, but it's strange. It, it's strange to have those two different perspectives. And I feel like I bounce between uh, both of them. And I don't know, Victoria, if you find <laughs> the news particularly upsetting here, but it is intense, intense, intense. I tried not to pay too much attention because it's weird. Well, I'll say one more word then before I go, um, since you <laughs> since you asked. Um, I I get a lot of criticism for this, but I feel like my sanity has depended on it. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, starting in 2000, so wow, 22 years ago, um, I... I did it. What's <laughs> what one of my Buddhist teachers calls a complete news fast um, because I fell into a horrible depression. I was living in Japan and it was, you know, 9-11 happened while I was in Japan and all kinds of things. And I realized because I was reading the newspaper every day while I lived in Japan because I had access to it at the university where we were. And I was so depressed. I thought I just wanted to die. I didn't want to live anymore. And then it hit me one day that it was the news because I, I I sort of analyzed my whole life and I thought what what is causing this like it came out of the blue this horrible depression just crippling and so I so every morning instead of going to the faculty lounge and reading the International Herald Tribune I went to the little chapel on the campus and tried to teach myself how to play the organ and which was not successful but but I loved it anyway and um and it's made all the difference. And and I keep up with the there. You don't. It, the amazing thing is you don't have to read the news or listen to the news or watch the news because if you live in the world, you're going to hear 
anyway, you're going to hear the salient things. And especially, and if there's something that you can do something about, you're going to hear about it. You know, I get things in the mail for like fundraising things or whatever. And I'm going to play a benefit concert for uh, the Ukrainian refugees, for example, um, as soon as my arm gets better. So I don't feel like I'm living, you know, with my head under a rock. And yet I feel like it's as, that that's as much as I can handle. I mean, and of course it's very personal and I don't judge people that like live on the news like my mother did. Um, she watched CNN 24 seven and I don't, I don't know what good it did her, but she loved it. But um, anyway, I'm talking, I'm using up the whole meeting, but I think um, I'm sure my appointment's gonna start, but, but thank you. Um, yeah, anyway, I, I encourage people that feel overwhelmed not to feel obligated. It's not an obligation and it's no. become entertainment. It's become a kind of, per, I think a kind of perverse entertainment because if you think a hundred years ago, it, it, nobody knew what was going on even in the next town unless something major happened. You know, we, we know more than we need to know and it's overwhelming, I think. All right, enough of my speech. <laughs> Goodbye again. Hi. Um, yeah, what you just said, Victoria, is, um, I think it was today or yesterday, when I was scrolling down the news, and there was one article was a snowstorm, a, Mac, uh, a big snowstorm is coming, because there will be some snowdrops in the in the in the Alps. And the other one was like up to 40 uh, degrees um, and and the heat wave and but within you know like three or four articles after <laughs> and my husband came in, I was laughing so loud. And 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 I said, yeah, it's it's like they out of a little sun thunderstorm, they have to make a huge something that somebody is reading it. So I, I feel like the poor journalists, in order to get any attention, they have to exaggerate everything. And then it becomes boring after some time. So, um, and even the who is it, the head of something in the climate thing, uh, so an official. And he said, I cannot hear it anymore because uh, you will not die immediately when the climate goes 1.5 uh, degrees up. It's, it's like, if we don't do anything, it will become worse and worse. But but it's it's like it takes people from doing something because it's everything is so catastrophic and so overwhelming then you just yeah get depressed go in your hole or or be paralyzed and 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 to read this this morning it was so i mean it was <laughs> so ridiculous that that I could see this. I mean, it was, it's not always that obvious, but there is so many words in it that really exaggerate what just would be boring news. And that's for me the reason I don't believe anything anymore. And I try to go to the, to the roots and get real uh, information especially the suppressed information, which is censored. And then I think, why do they censor these people? Oh, probably they have to say something which is sort of true. So I listen and I learn a whole lot about these things. And I don't believe any of this catastrophic. Uh, for instance, they say in Italy, heat wave, like it was always like this since I'm here. I have uh, heat waves in summer, two or three, when we are worse off than when it was even four heat waves and it was hot. I mean, about seven to 10 days it was hot and it was not hotter than now. And that it was is also exaggerated and every weather event is used for to say, oh, climate change. Oh, yeah, climate is changing, but it has changed all the time. 
And lately I, I understood that we are in an outgoing ice age. So we, we, we had ice age not long ago and we are going fortunately a little bit warmer and many people will be happy to, to have it warmer. You know, I mean, that's because I want to have it warm. I'm in Italy, otherwise I could have stayed in Germany. So I, uh, the, the main thing I want to say, I don't believe anything of these hype things anymore. And I try to understand and read a lot. What I have learned in the last few years, it's, it's incredible. This morning I heard an, 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 a talk about the trying to regime change in Venezuela. I wasn't aware of all these things, so, you know, and I, I try to go and, and learn more and more and more of the world, which before I just didn't want to know, maybe, or it didn't arrive at my at my place. And so I listened to it. Oh, this has happened. Oh, oh, illegal in influence in other countries. Oh, and now that happens. And so, so I try to make my own, my own, but I, I listen to some news. But, you know, I try to really confine it to the strict minimum and I don't hear the news of the official um, mainstream media because I find them propaganda. And uh, I try to go to other channels and see what they are saying. And okay, we will see. I don't know if, it, if it's that black and white. I'm not sure. It's not that black and white, but it is as black and white as for me to to think. Don't trust. Don't trust. No, neither part. But make your own and make your own research and try to find what makes more sense. And um, that's the result of the last three years of intense study. And then coming to the velocity, I now realize that I can. It take in a lot of information. I don't remember it exactly anymore afterwards, but I succeed to make connections. Ah, that's, ah, I have heard this, and then I have heard this, and then I've heard this. And so I, it's like a puzzle, you know, puzzle pieces, and I put them somehow together. The only problem I have, I try to, to save the, the sources where I got this from, but in the computer is so difficult to to for me at least to to find things again after a while so yeah i try to and also i download uh, when when there are talks and so i download on the computer but even when we talk afterwards i don't know anymore two weeks ago what did we say a year ago what did we talk at this date so <laughs> let alone when you hear other things <laughs> okay that's my Five cents. I, I I I would just add a little more. For me, it's it's like this: it exaggeration prevents me from doing, or me maybe not so much, but people from doing the good things. <laughs> I mean, it's like <gasps> so. Um, so it doesn't mean that we cannot do something to to uh, help divest. Uh, yeah, the the yeah we lose species so often, uh, one after the other, or uh, things like that. So it, it's kind of what can I do? So so it becomes better, maybe in a very little fraction but not that i add to that um yeah sometimes gossip sometimes doomsday thing but um be center stay centered here and 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 come from here to to not be distracted so more to to stay in the eye of the storm <laughs> than to be <laughs> i think it's uh, i don't know if you know the book of kübler ross the five stages of of dying of uh, uh, meeting death i think with these things it's similar you have different stages 
there are stages of wrath, there are stages of depression, and there are stages when the hope comes up, and then stage when you uh, can do something. I mean, we are not going towards death as with Kübler-Ross, you know, but the thing that things happen in stages, and when you are in the wrath uh, stage, you are full of anger, but when you are in the next one of, of acceptance, that's already the way to, to prepare what when you ask yourself, oh, what can I do? No, So um, I think I at least have very much um, patience that now with people when I see that they are in this stage and they're not. So mm. knowing that uh, they might go on from one stage to the other and they might not. So we will see. So. Yeah, thank you, Heidi and Gertrude, for that. While you were both speaking, what came to me was specifically, and I'm just can only speak out of my own experience, of course, not <clears throat> for others, but if I look back at the pandemic, it was it was a strange experience for me because I wasn't focused on what was happening on around in the world. I was simply just doing the things that gave me joy. So I, I felt sort of disconnected from what happened outside, not that I didn't know what was going on, but I didn't have to listen to the news, for example, to know what was going on. You would hear it anyway, like, like uh, Victoria also said, you hear it regardless. But while you were both speaking, what came to me is energy flows where attention goes. So conscious living for me is I decide where I want to put my attention for whatever reason. So I'm and like you said, Gertrude, being grounded and centered is for me more valuable than to get caught up in all that fear and all the hype and all those things. And if I look at myself, there has been a time in the last year where I was completely thrown off my center because I was allowing myself to get really distracted also and, and, and absorbed into our power struggles in South Africa because we didn't have power for 12, 13 hours a day last year at some, in some days. And it created so much negativity and anger. People were so angry. And the effect it had on everybody's well-being was such a, the collective was so heavy and so angry that I didn't even want to go for a walk. I didn't want to go outside because then I would just feel it all. It's not even mine. So for me to have come out of that was quite... It, it took a lot of work to refocus my attention where I'm putting my attention and how I see all these things. That I don't get absorbed in that fear that, that I creates. Yet it, it takes a lot of hard work then. Once you are drawn and drawn back to it, and then you make perhaps not such good decisions either. But it, it it's like I think Victoria said, one of you said that it's this polarity. And I think it was you, Christine this polarization as well and feeling, feeling being, being pulled apart by it if we put our attention on it. And we can just take a step back and just see it for what it is um, for myself. It, it, it's a very different experience then. Because I think sensitive people, like we are all, and intuitive people, we, we can easily absorb these things. So it's very important then to just take conscious and centered of what am I absorbing? Is this really mine? And is it really what I want? And where I want to put my attention? And that for me personally, it always drains me if I do do that. If I do get in, sucked into something like that for whatever reason. And I, you know, my own personal choice, I don't want to be drained by something like that. Because then I can't contribute to anything else or, or at least the things that I want to still continue contributing to while I'm still here. But I do feel hope in myself. I do feel hope in myself. Life. When I speak about hope, for me, it's life. There's life. As long as we still hear there's life. Thank you. I'm complete. I would like to add something. Um, about speed, velocity, and um, 
Jody Spencer, he says it's going faster and faster, the manifestation, because when you're in it, <laughs> then you overcome distance and time. So, so even compared to other people, maybe, <laughs> that we are more and more like in that realm of possibility of the universe of presence of and even if it doesn't feel ev like that every day but we are we trained ourselves to more and more go into to that realm and um so so he was talking about manifestation but i think it's also like how you perceive time so it's more yeah it's just <laughs> no concept anymore in some some areas of my life so it's it's how long did it take did it take 10 minutes or two hours i don't know i just have to look at my my clock to 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 put it in relation to this 3D world. But my perception of time has changed so much. Well, is it because things are happening, change is happening quickly? It, it seems like with technology, you know, the it just seems exponential that things are happening fast and it's hard to you know fathom some of these changes and what they all mean mm. i think it's yes things are happening fast and at the same time i sometimes i have the impression that time stands still so that's both at the same time that you see ever more things happening and no at the same time, it's, it's, it's a strange feeling. For instance, I feel I have no time at all and I have all the time of the world. I can choose what I want to do and what can I do next? Oh, do I need to do something? Oh, I can, at the moment, I cannot imagine anymore as I did before. I have to go out of the house, do this and do this and do that and do that and blah, 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 blah. No. And now it happens to me that I didn't do a thing. Oh, I will do it tomorrow and no problem you know this this script the the command of the time has uh, loosened so yeah there are some appointments for instance for the rehearsal for the concert I will be in time but the rest yeah when you have an appointment but the rest what I do here oh, I do it I do it I, and get things get done anyway without me getting under stress you know so this is part of the changed perception of time for me. Mm -hmm. That's such a lovely feeling to know that if you didn't get it done today, there's tomorrow. <laughs> you know, you're not so pressured to uh, I've got to get it done now because I've got this yeah, other thing. And you do don't afterwards. you don't shout on you on yourself anymore and don't do hey, you should have done blah 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 blah. And this is a big relief. <laughs> Heidi, I'm curious, when you said time stands still, is it timelessness or time stands still? You know, if you drive through some of our small towns, it's like time stood still. There was no progress. There was no advance. It's like still like 100 years ago, where for me, timelessness is just there's no perception of time. It's just not it's not going at all. So I'm just curious, what, when you say time stands still, do you refer to timelessness or literally like there's no progress or no movement? Neither of that. For me, it's the, the feeling of freedom in time. So, you know, that the time is not commanding me. Also, I know that they get past it, but it's not that I'm under the... Mm -hmm. um, you know, under the command of uh, of the time, that's more what I understand with time stands still, and that I just can be a moment. Oh, okay. 
time is not dictating what you're to do. That it, yeah. it's not the master telling you how to do things or when to do things. It's your it's a different decision for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the feeling is actually, yeah, the time doesn't as I said, stand still in the sense that it isn't it's a, somehow a feeling of eternity in the moment, you know, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, Joe Dispenza, he, he has these five no's, no time, no, no where, no one. <laughs> yeah, the others. Yeah, so, so like, where there is none of what defined us till now. Are you talking about late uh, things of Joe Dispenza? Mm, I'm not sure if I got the latest, but uh, yeah, about uh, define your de destiny. That's that's okay. the one I did. What I meant is that we are stepping out of that which is defining us. So a certain time that dictates us, a certain being, a certain space. And so I, I think, yeah, time, timeless, but it's not only timelessness. It's, it's just the 3D world on hold something like that and maybe that's what you what you were referring to mm -hmm. i'm curious i haven't uh, listened to anything of him for at least two or three years so i'm not aware yeah so i don't know the latest um, mm -hmm. yeah in research also yeah, yeah. Yeah, almost at the end of the hour, we could do a oh, sort of... Sorry, I'm yawning so much. <laughs> I had to get up very early for the Australians. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's still the problem, that we cannot be together, America, Europe and Australia. That's not comfortable, at least. Hmm. Shall we do a check out with a sort of summary what what came up for you in our conversation? Um, I'll go. It was it seemed to be partly very metaphysical this morning when we're talking about time um, and the flow of things, uh, change, um, hope. All those topics came up. Belief: What do we what do we trust in? What don't we trust? Uh, feelings of betrayal and being overwhelmed. So a lot of a lot of things came up. It'll it'll be good to digest some of that as I uh, go through my week, and I hope to <laughs> maintain some consciousness uh, of uh, my experience, so I don't just fly through the days and forget what the heck happened. So I'll try to remain conscious of things that'll be my goal for the week is not to uh not to lose that peace that we started uh this morning so i'm appreciative of that and hopefully we'll hold it gently uh <laughs> hands and everybody have a good couple of weeks and i'm done i'm taking with me that beautiful energy of babies and through our experience together the relation to that and time of us coming into the world and then the experience of how we experience in time and speed at the moment and I do what you say that freedom of time to just be present to whatever is showing up and not to lose myself into that
See, well, I will take that with me. And, and my body is sort of said, don't worry about time. <laughs> you are alive, you are here. <laughs> time is just a mental construct that creates a little division for us that we can structure our lives accordingly. And that reminds me of what you said, Gertrude, about 3D world on hold. I love that. I'll take that with me as well. Thank you. I'm complete. For me, I realized I, and it's often here, uh, that I opened my mouth and I didn't know what comes out. <laughs> so, um, yeah, thank you for, for that realm in which that can happen. And um, yeah, uh, with my first two uh, grandchildren, it also, was also great, but now I get it even deeper somehow with the two all to, at a time, so to say. And um, yeah, and their timelessness. They don't even know that mom's is coming back if she goes to to the bathroom. So it's it's like it's always, <laughs> always, always. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Heidi. Yeah, thank you. I was actually thinking about how babies perceive time. And I think that's really timelessness in, in many ways. I think, I don't know, I can't remember actually. But maybe in a certain sense, yes, because when, you know, in some the holidays in summer seem to be a long time and you, you wanted to be older. I, I wanted to be older. It seemed to be far, far away or, you know, it was an, a different perception of, of time anyway. But as a toddler, I mean, I have no idea how they perceive time. I think they are just living in the present, in the now. And I think we try to, to learn that again without losing the, the consciousness of uh, of, of of the world around and whatever of the inside and outside world while I think that babies don't have that but I even don't know so let's continue with our own research and we will do that in two weeks with Hanali I'm already looking forward to that bye bye then <laughs> ciao good luck with your um, concert Heidi yeah thank you, thank you. hope you yeah. enjoy it I Thank hope so. You. <laughs> Good. Bye -bye. And will you, Heidi, will you send us a confirmation? Are you going to check with Monia about the 90 minutes next time? Or is that, a, okay. are, is that? I will do that. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.